training modules and development initiatives for improved productivity and quality enhancement. He has authored some of the best-selling books titled Billionaire's Mindset, which is also available on Amazon, and has published Ethical Hacking and Cybersecurity Textbook for D.Y. Patel College, University of Pune. Sir is a professional ethical trainer, digital marketing trainer, cybersecurity trainer, consultant over a decade's experience working shoulder to shoulder with cybercrime cell and has a vast experience training corporate, multinational and retail institutes for advanced topics like certified ethical hacker, cybersecurity, penetration testing. His additional achievements include certified ethical hacker since 2015, certified Cali for pen testers with e-counsel score dread and cyber security trainer. He has also conducted several training programs on cyber security awareness and certified ethical hacking in various institutes to name a few LIC, Emoticus Mumbai, Barclays, uh, Somaya College, Nanded University and Thakur College of Engineering. So, without any further ado, I would like to invite our speaker, Mr. Jasmine Dauda, sir, to begin with his session. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am, for that wonderful uh, intro. And uh, hi everyone, very good afternoon guys. So uh, ethical hacking and cyber security is our topic. How comfortable are you with this thing called uh, uh, cyber security? How comfortable are you with this thing called ethical hacking? If I introduce myself as a hacker, if I tell guy, hi guys, I'm a hacker. The first thing they do is they hide their mobile phone. Ye banda mera mobile phone mein se data chori kar lega. Okay, so that's basically how you know when you when you introduce yourself as an, a, a hacker there's this negative sentiment that's not what we are about so the first thing that i want to ask you guys is hey guys what's the first thing that you do when you get up in the morning how do you start your day correct the first thing that you have in your hands is your mobile phone what's the last thing that you do before you go to sleep guys same thing, check WhatsApp, check social media, check out your mobile phones and what do you do the rest of the day? Before, before the class started, what is it that we were doing a few minutes before the class started? We were checking our mobile phones, right? So when we are looking at the world today, the world that we live in today, this world, it seems that we live in a digital world, right? So. The only problem living in this digital world is what was it was it was a challenge living in a digital world. Thank you so much. OK. Yeah, I think that's better. That allows me to have some movement. Thank you so much. OK, so now. Let's see if the slides change on their own. Yeah, that's great. So when you're talking about a digital world, let's all right, I think I'll have to be. Yeah. So in today's class, uh, or this uh, brief session that we are going to have, we are going to talk about what exactly is cybersecurity. We are going to talk about freeware, beware. That's going to be something lovely. We are going to discuss about some of the tools that a hacker can use to hack anybody, including me. How social media word in indulgence is a challenge for us and what we can do to overcome and how to avoid cyberbullying, how to avoid something like, uh, you know, getting your e-wallets hacked and a lot of other things is something that we'll be covering in today's class. That's exactly what uh, I've been requested that you have to uh, talk about this thing. Why is cyber security important, guys? Kya farak padega? If we leave out our lives, we go around doing whatever we like, right? It's a free country. You can do pretty much whatever you like. Why do we need cyber security, guys? Any reasons? Okay, everything is online. So once upon a time, you know, the world was like this. In ancient times, power meant strength. The strong people used to rule over the weak people. Things changed a little bit and we came to the times when wealth meant power. 
anybody who has money anybody who has gold silver and all the jewelries rubies diamonds these were the people who were ruling over us so that was like wealth meant power things strange changed again modern times assets became power and now welcome to the 21st century in the 21st century what is power today who are the most powerful people on the planet today yes please <laughs> elon musk <laughs> absolutely so what are we looking at we are looking at technical companies we are looking at data today it is said that data is the new oil okay if you had oil below your feet you are a multi millionaire and now if you have data on your screen you are a multi billionaire okay so data is wealth today and how much data is there where is your data okay today if you guys want to buy a mobile phone where will you go will you go to that local shop and you will ask that fellow excuse me just show me five six mobile phones i want to buy one is that what you do where do we buy our mobile phones from guy online right you'll go to amazon you'll go to flipkart you will go and you will check out where this mobile is available and even if you go to the chroma store to buy that mobile phone you are going to tell that fellow amazon itne mein deta hai tum kitne mein deta hai even there the comparison comes so what we are looking at is today all your businesses are online my dear friends your banks where is your bank today the bank is not in that local gali ka naka where is the bank now today the bank is in this device the bank is in this device and where is my bank my bank is right here in the thin air it is core banking everything is online if i really want to empty your bank account my dear friends i don't need a doom three byte i don't need to use any kind of uh, you can say machine guns or a gateway car if i want to rob your bank i can sit in ccd sipping my favorite cup of coffee using the ccd's wifi and empty your bank and that security guard is still standing there he doesn't know that bank is empty see how cool that is we are living in a world where everything my dear friends every single thing is online okay where are the businesses the businesses are online where are sorry i'm going the wrong way where are the wallets the wallets are online hmm? how much money do you have in your pockets where is all your money it's in paytm it's in gpay it's online okay what about hackers unfortunately so are hackers the hackers are also online and that's what this class is about my dear friends when we are looking at your online assets how safe do you feel online how secure do you feel about not getting hacked and so tell me guys if i want to hack you how easy or how difficult is it what is protecting you from getting hacked let's understand yes please yeah would you like to contribute yeah please yeah encrypted services that's great okay so if you if you encrypt your data uh, you can you can protect yourself that's a great answer and how can i prevent my data from getting transmitted to the wrong hands what else can we do so the the simple question is how many of you or how many of your friends do you know anyone in your circle who's ever been hacked please raise your hands if you know somebody who's been hacked or if you yourself have been hacked okay i think almost the whole class at some point or the other has raised the hands right what does that mean it's easy to hack you how can you be hacked is the question that we that needs to be addressed the other question that needs attention is why the heck do we need cyber security so coming to the world of cyber crime if there was no cyber security your bank account would be empty okay your bank account balance would be zero your credit card can be hacked your confidential data <coughs> can be wiped off from the servers just like that stock markets could crash the trains can't run aeroplanes can't run because their computers are down am i correct 
the traffic about the entire world can plunge into chaos just by the press of a few buttons by a hacker this is not a doomsday scenario we are talking about kaseya attack kaseya attack was one of the largest ransomware attacks in history 1500 plus organizations okay were hacked on the same day using the kaseya attack who was behind this attack we don't know but probably a group called r evil what this group did is these groups attacked banks government organizations they organized you know they attacked universities hospitals schools colleges small businesses they attacked supermarkets more than 70 million dollars were demanded as ransom what exactly is ransomware guys any clues yes please hi yeah okay yeah he's bringing you the mic please. use the mic it's a kind of malicious software which okay. is uh, it is it is basically something uh, how we for uh, for instance mm -hmm. if we make a malicious code okay it is sent on the victim's co computer okay. to uh, encrypt it or lock it in a way and then we uh, ask for ransom from that victim yes. and if he provides us that uh, then we uh, unlock it okay so that's that's a great answer thank you so much so uh, ransomware is where you lock my data without my permission and if you want your data back give me the money otherwise i'll not give you the key so why can't you just hire a, a, a hacker like me to recover your data back why do you have to give the ransom yeah okay uh, it depends on the way the hacker has uh, encrypted, encrypted the data okay uh, it could uh, uh, it could have a different password or a different algorithm altogether mm -hmm. so if a hacker tries to recover the data back you can recover the data back it will take you just a few hundred years to recover the data back and that's the whole problem right so you have no choice but to negotiate with these uh, guys who have who have hijacked your data you have absolutely no choice now the second part of the question is okay fine i'll give them the day, the money and then i'll trace them why can't i do that i'll give them the money they want money fine i'll send it to them whatever banking account they, they give and then i'll put them behind bars can we do that why not now okay they are asking ran ransom i'll give you ransom okay they want a million dollars i'll give you 1 million dollars fine and then i trace it back to them can i or can i not do that that's also not possible why welcome to cryptocurrency if they will not demand money in the form of physical cash they can be caught they will not demand money in the form of net banking mere bank account mein dal do no what are they going to do bitcoins they are going to demand cryptocurrencies which is untraceable back to the source so that's how security has been you can say misused in today's world when you are looking at uh you know hacking now this group called r evil they not only had these colleges universities hospitals just imagine if the hospital's data is compromised okay what will happen what is the medication going on in that patient suddenly i don't have the data the patient may die i'm not talking about one or two i'm talking talking about millions of my uh, patients data are being compromised so that's what's happening okay they attacked solar winds microsoft and vmware the funny part about solar winds is it is a cyber security organization okay even that was not spared microsoft's data microsoft is the largest it giant on the planet microsoft's data was compromised every single piece of code that has ever been written by microsoft developers has been hacked and stolen i'm talking about windows 10 and windows 11 i'm talking about ms office that powerpoint on which i'm running my presentation all this data is there in the hands of the r evil group see the power of hacking see the power of the guys that are doing this okay when you are looking at nasa pentagon us government uk government the nato the european parliament us treasury us department of commerce us department of telecom all been hacked how secure do you feel now guys abhi bhi chance paisa nikal raha okay let's talk about the intellectual property that was stolen from microsoft all the software codes 
and confidential emails were completely hacked beyond recognition. Okay, when you're looking at cyber warfare, the world is entering a new age of cyber warfare. Today, if I want to bring down the economy of the country, I don't really need those two, two planes to go and uh, crash into some twin towers. That's no longer needed nowadays. We don't need Osama bin Laden. If you really want to break the economy of a country, all you need is four or five hackers. That's all. You bring down their stock market. Okay. How much business is happening on the stock market, guys? Per second? Millions? If I bring your stock market down for four hours, imagine what will happen to your country's economy. That's all that is needed. Okay, just imagine the kind of the world that we are living in. The, there are advantages of the digital platform and there are huge disadvantages of digital platform. And that is the message that needs to be understood when you're looking at Stuxnet. Okay, now we are talking about something that happened a few years ago that could have triggered World War Three. But we are still living. World War Three never happened. It may happen re now thanks to Ukraine and Russia. But it didn't happen in those days. Why? Because of one virus. One virus saved the world. How? Let me tell you. Okay. Iran was preparing for nuclear armaments. Not one, not two, not three. They had 984 uranium plants that were completely ready for launching an attack all across the globe. But what happened? The CIA, the Mossad, and the US government got together and all they did was they developed a pen drive, the USB thumb drive. And what they did is they left that thumb drive lying on the table. In this, in one of the uranium plants, somebody out of curiosity inserted that pen drive into the system just to see what is inside it. If you see a pen drive lying, what will you do? That's what they did. Okay. Now, this pen drive contained something called as a Stuxnet worm. It's a little different from virus. For a virus to spread, it needs to be activated. You need to run it. But for a worm, all you need is you put in the pen drive and the worm spreads on its own. So, to make a long story short, the worm spread into the entire system. And it changed some key components, some key settings in the uranium plants. 984 uranium plants were completely damaged, totally beyond repairs, and World War III was averted by a tiny little virus. Okay. Now, when you are the sorry, the Iranian hackers did not take this lightly. Now it's my turn, they said. And what they did was they opened the floodgates of the New York Dam. Sitting in Iran, they pressed a few buttons. And the entire New York City was flooded. This did not come in the newspapers. They said there was an accident. The only accident was the Iranian hackers. Okay, the, the Iranian hackers were responsible for this kind of an attack. Can you see? You can destroy families. You can destroy millions of people by pressing a few buttons. It is said that US has got amazing technology of satellites and missile counter systems all across the globe. There are seven strategic locations and they can deflect any, any attack that is coming across in the United States. Okay, it's that powerful. Now it is said that even if one of these centers gets hacked, even for a few seconds, the president of America has standing instructions to press that red button and fire the nuclear missiles all across the world to save his country. In simple words, my dear friend, one, one hacking attempt can destroy 95% of the world's population. Okay, this is the world that we live in. And that is why cybersecurity is such a big deal. The question that I asked you earlier is, can you be hacked, guys? So the question is not, can you be hacked? The question is, how can you be hacked? So, if I want to hack you, can I have a volunteer? Can I can I hack one of you, please? A volunteer, please. I'm getting a lot of yes, please. Hi. Uh, can you can you pass the mic to him? Yeah, please. If you stand up, he'll be able to notice you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hi. Hello, sir. So, uh, thanks for volunteering. That's a brave guy. Okay, he's ready to be hacked. And thank you. What's your name? Hi. 
Mitesh. And where, uh, which year are you? I am first year MSCIT. Okay. Very okay, okay, very dangerous challenge that you have accepted. So, Mitesh, right? Yes. Okay, so Mitesh, if I were to ask you a few things, okay, would you be able to give me, I have been introduced by madam as a hacker. I have been a hacker for 20 years plus of my life. So, uh, forget about uh, me as a hacker. Even if I was a total stranger, how comfortable would you be in sharing your smartphone with me? So, I will just request your smartphone. Yes, Mitesh, sir. Mami ko phone karne ka hai. please give me the phone. I need it for three minutes. Would you? He is coming. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, you don't really have to give me your smartphone. Uh, thanks, but uh, just, yeah, you'll be there on your seat. So, if I ask this question, not just to Mitesh, but for the whole class, how comfortable would you be in giving me your smartphone for something like three minutes? I just want to urgently call my mommy. I'll make the phone call and come back. How many of you will give me your smartphones, guys? Raise your hands. Oh, there are three very brave souls in the class who will do that. And very nice. Thank you so much. What will happen if you give me your smartphone, guys? What do you think? What do you think a hacker like me will do with your smartphones? I'll use your smartphone, make a phone call to my mommy and give it back to you. Okay. What do you think I'll do? Uh, you will definitely try to uh, take my IP address or you will transfer my calls to your number. Okay. You can do that. Or if uh, possible, then you can uh, give my number and you can trace it. From All right. You. Okay. I'll do much worse than that. Okay. So what I'll do is if you give me a phone for three minutes, what I'll do is I'll install a malware. It's a, it's a you can say a, a privacy nightmare. What is malware? is now once I install the malware into your mobile phone, I'll give you your mobile phone in two and a half to three minutes, my Thomas. After that, my dear friends, whatever you are doing on your mobile phone, I will be able to see no matter where in the world I am. I can read all your WhatsApp chats, including those lovely chats that you have read and deleted. One year's worth of data. All the videos that you have ever watched, I will see where you are. And I will be able to access your camera, the front camera, the rear camera in real time. How comfortable does, does it uh, make you feel, guys? And I'm not kidding. This is something that we have demonstrated n number of times and scared the shit out of people. Okay. They have no clue that you are just giving your mobile phone, being a good Samaritan, playing that good Samaritan, because I'm requesting you, mommy ko phone karne ka urgently, they don't have battery low hai. You will give it. But we don't understand that it's a privacy nightmare. I can just put in that data, you will never even come to know. Okay, let's continue asking the second question. How comfortable are you sharing your camera with me? <laughs> okay, that lovely smile on uh, Mitesh's face gives me the answer already. Okay, fantastic. So, I just want to access your camera, man. Sitting wherever I am in the world, I want to access your camera. Will you say yes or no? Stupid question. Everybody is going to say no. Right? Let's ask your address and location. Absolutely no. He's just rigorously shaking his head. No way. Okay. What about your contacts? I want to be able to read all your contacts from your screen. Everything that you have, all the contacts that you have on your mobile phone. Now you guys are wondering why is this guy asking such weird questions. Please bear with me. There is a reason to my madness. In two slides, everything will become clear why I'm asking you these stupid and silly questions. What about your Wi-Fi password? Baju Ali ko bhi Wi-Fi password nahi diya hai, ko kya dega? <laughs> okay, so Wi-Fi password also you are not sharing with anybody, including your best friends. Your, your best friend also does not know your pattern lock, I hope. Okay, see? See the whole point? Your photos, your documents, all the stuff on your media. Will you give this kind of information to a, to a total stranger? How many of you in this class will do this? Mitesh is not raising his hands and nobody in the class has raised their hands. Now, guys, I'm going to show you one magic mantra. Within two minutes, everybody will raise their hands. Okay, let's continue playing. Thank you, Mitesh. Please have a seat. Okay, so Mitesh has uh, agreed. Now, everybody, including Mitesh, is completely sure that you are not going to give me the details, right? Lock here, Jai. All right, let's see. Yes, Bola. Let's see now. Let's talk about how many of you have ever played or installed any of these games? Subway Surfer. Temple Run, Candy Crush, Ludo, uh, PUBG, free. How much do you pay for these games? Oh, they are free, right? 
Okay, what about these? WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. How many of you use this? Stupid question. Everyone in the class is using it. So guys, how much did you pay for these tools? They are free, right? You agree they are free. So how do these poor people make money? They are giving you everything for free here. Hmm? They are not charging you a single penny. WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram. Don't you think developing these tools? Okay, you guys are IT guys. Okay, these tools take cost to develop, right? It takes cost to maintain them, to update them, put them on the server. And regularly keep changing them. So how do these poor people make money if they give you everything for free? By the way, these are the biggest IT giants in the world. These are multi-billion dollar companies and they are not charging you a single penny. So how do these people make money, guys? Tell me. Yes, please. Hi. Attention. So are they only after your attention or is it something else? Okay, you spend more time on my app, what will I get? Data. Remember, what is the new oil? What is the new gold? Data. Okay. Now, what are you giving when you are downloading something free of cost? This F R -E, e is one of the biggest scams on the planet. This magic word is one of the biggest scams on the planet. If a hacker wants to hack you, the hacker will not go and ask Mitesh, Mitesh, please give me your username and password. Mitesh, I know Mitesh is not going to give me. So how will I hack you? I'll give you something for free, my dear friends. And how do I hack you? Maybe I'll use something like this. Okay, let's see if we can read what's going on. Whenever you are downloading any tool, okay, these are some of the things. One of the things that you're asking for is the device and app history. What do we mean by history? I'm not talking about Mahatma Gandhi and Rana Pratap and Shivaji Maharaj. When you're talking about history, we are talking about what have you been doing on your mobile phone, right? That's history. Your device history has been leaked out. What about identity? Who are you? Where do you stay? Your location, your contacts, your photographs, your media files, your cameras, your Wi-Fi connections. How many of you have downloaded any free tool from the internet? Please raise your hands. And what have you given? Everything that two slides ago you said you will never give to a total stranger. Correct? How many of you have been hacked? This is how hacking is done, my dear friends. It is done in such a subtle manner that you don't even know that you have been hacked. What am I doing? I'm playing a Fukatka game. And what are you doing? My dear friends, you are getting hacked. This is the data that you are not giving to your best friend. This is the data that you are never shared with anybody. And these people are very nice people. They are not going to open your data. Okay. They will simply allow you to use WhatsApp for free and they will not see anything that you are doing. Okay. How many of you agree to that? <laughs> see the point. Okay. This is how hacking is done, my dear friends. Okay. Thinking that there is something available for free. Okay, no, there is no such thing as free lunch. Please write that down. The only two entities in the world that will give you anything for free that I know, one is your parents and second is God. Nobody else will give you anything for free. They are going to charge you like anything. Okay, WhatsApp included. Instagram, WhatsApp, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Snapchat. Whenever you are downloading these, what are you doing? Try to remove one permission from WhatsApp. It will stop working. Remove the permission of your uh, this thing, uh, camera. Remove the permission of your location. Okay, forget about it. Try to uninstall it. Okay. You will see. You will see what we mean by privacy and what we mean by security. What is privacy? Do you know? I don't know. There is no such thing as privacy. If you have ever been on the internet for even one second in your life, my dear friends, you don't have anything called privacy. Okay, that is the bitter truth of the world that we are living in, the digital world that you are living in. Okay, why is downloading anything free so dangerous? Let me ask you a question, guys. Let's say that there is a maid servant coming into your house and asking your mom or asking your dad, can I sweep your home for free? How many of you will say yes to the maid servant? 
काम वाली बाई स्टडी यू पोछा मार के देती हूँ फ्री में हम नी ऑफ यू विल से यस नो वाई नॉट वाई नॉट बिकॉज यू नो शी इज गोइंग टू क्लीन योर हाउस मैन ओके यू अंडरस्टैंड दैट इन द फिजिकल थिंग वाई कैंट यू अंडरस्टैंड दैट ऑन द वर्चुअल वर्ल्ड द सेम थिंग वी आर डाउनलोडिंग फ्री सी क्लीनर दिस इज द मेड दैट इज क्लीनिंग माई कंप्यूटर फॉर फ्री वट यू थिंक इट इज टेकिंग इट इज ओनली क्लीनिंग माई फोन कंप्यूटर एंड लिविंग नाइसली राइट हाउ मनी ऑफ यू आर यूजिंग एनी एप्स दैट आर क्लीनिंग योर मोबाइल फोन फॉर फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट काम वाली वाई सेटिंग इन योर मोबाइल फोन मैम and what data do you have on your mobile phone what kind of data do we have okay would you like to share that data with me so pretty sure you don't but you are sharing this with that kam wali bhai you have given that permission to scan every single file on your computer i'm going to clean your files my dear friends i'm going to clean your files this is freeware beware nobody gives you anything for free rule number 1 in hacking rule number 1 in cyber security there is no free lunch remember if somebody is giving you something for free run okay do not download anything for free there is no free lunch okay if a if a hacker wants to hack you there are tools and gadgets that might shock you let's talk about them before we talk about how to protect your e wallets how to uh you can say protect yourself from cyber bullying let's see if we can talk about this let's talk about atm so <coughs> i believe most of you have used net banking most of you have a net banking account thank you so much so whenever a hacker wants to hack your uh net banking what will that hacker do he'll take that hacker six months to hack your bank account because your bank account is very secure let me assure you okay so we'll do the next best thing i'll not hack your bank account i'll hack your atm how secure is your atm guys we have got a four digit pin code how long does it take a four digit pin code to get hacked on my core i5 processor with a 16 gb ram in it it is going to take something like 17 seconds and that's to that to because my system is slow earlier is to be 7 seconds that is before i installed that game in it okay so now it takes 17 seconds for me to hack something like this now today if you want your bank account to be cleaned out the hackers would be using something like this device this device is what we call as an atm skimmer tool the atm skimmer is installed on top of the physical device that is used to insert your card as soon as you inter- insert this card into my atm skimmer it will read your credit card or your debit card details half the mission is accomplished now what is left i didn't get your password yet so for that we'll be using a fake keypad and this fake keypad is placed on top of the original keypad and now thank you very much you can check your bank balance in 5 minutes my promise it will be zero okay this is how a hacker would steal your details now as a cyber security professionals as pen testers we approach these credit card companies and we tell told them hey guys you know there are these kind of tools available you need to protect your banks from these kind of attacks they said okay sir don't worry ho jayega how did they protect them they said ATM skimmers. If you put them inside, they can be hacked. So they remove the ATM skimmers concept, and they give me Wi-Fi credit cards. Okay. Under dalega to hack hoyga na. So what do you think? Have they made hacking easier or more complicated? Much easier. Now I can pick your pocket from this distance. Okay. The technology is called NFC. What does that stand for? near field communication so in simple words i can sit across the room and my mobile is scanning all your systems and collecting your data and you don't even know about it thank you very much that is the power of nfcs that is the power of wifi credit cards how many of you or your parents are using wifi credit cards sir is using i am using okay so how can we protect ourselves from wifi credit card attacks 
okay all i have to do is i have to go near sir and i have to say ask you know if sir is a stranger sir, sir can you please guide me to the nearest mcdonald and while sir is guiding me to the nearest mcdonald what am i doing i'm scanning his pocket seeing this side this side and what am i getting i'm getting his credit card details and the mcdonald burger that i'll be eating will be from sir's account <laughs> okay this is a reality okay you don't have to steal money from somebody's pocket this is remote pickpocketing okay and this is quite possible i'm not talking about collecting data from only abhijit sir i'm talking about collecting data from millions and millions of people by giving you a free game a lovely free game you download it you play it you enjoy it and what is it doing in the background there is a malicious code what is that code doing nothing dangerous don't worry it is only collecting your net banking details not just yours but everybody who is nearby you so it be really awesome to just hack into somebody's phone and might make that person stand in the other railway station at 9 6:30 pm in the evening you would get the data of half of the mumbai people in 2 hours <laughs> that's what hacking is and this is an example of wifi hacking okay now let's talk about spy pens a hacker could gift you a pen okay that has got hd cameras lovely looking pen okay and that's like a uh, uh, fantastic resolution it works for an entire week and no it does not glow the pen has got hd call uh, uh, hd card of uh, anything but up to 512 uh, the thing 512 gb on it it can be anything between 6 gb to 512 gb as of right now and it can record audio and video in hd quality in real time for a week without getting discharged and the best part is it writes also it's a pen okay so now we could install a spy bulb i have myself been responsible for installing more than 100 spy bulbs in different different places okay why do i install spy bulbs but don't worry i'm not spying on people i've been officially allowed to do that by people like you can say uh, people who have got maid servants in their home and they want to see whether they are taking care of their uh, senior citizen parents properly or they are taking care of the kids properly so for that purpose we have installed it but these are also being misused in the ladies changing rooms for obvious reasons okay looking at something worse than that that's a hook where you hang your clothes in the ladies changing room it's yes guys it's a camera hd quality camera audio and video record okay scary right spy cameras where you can charge your mobile phones yes it's a camera <laughs> okay we have power banks anybody wants a power bank i'll sell okay <laughs> okay that's it and we have i could give you a wall clock okay and you can just imagine you can't even make out that something like this is hidden there okay these are the kind of devices that you see out there hmm? when you the, when the next time you go into that oyo room with your families okay i'm talking about families okay don't misunderstand <laughs> okay when you go with the families what you might want to do and that's a that's a sting bag operation if you want to you uh, perform a sting operation on someone you can use this kind of a bag it's a very trendy bag also and what you need is you need to carry one tool like this there are some apps available but those apps are not as efficient as this particular device just move it around that oyo room before you uh, log in or you can say register into that room the next time please be careful okay that's basically uh, the the spy bug detectors that are available to make sure that you are in a genuinely clean room okay that's the technology that we are having and how do we lock our cars nowadays we don't have that lock and key system anymore how do we lock our car you press a button right that's what i'm pressing okay you have a remote control you press a button and the car beeps saying that i am locked another beep and it's saying that i am unlocked that's how it works okay now this car lock and unlock button has got a radio frequency rfid signals that can be captured by this lovely looking device that's called a roll jam device what this roll jam device will do is next time when you are entering into that parking lot 
if a hacker is sitting there with his laptop like mine, the hacker is capturing your data. You press the button and you will find that your car did not get locked. You thought maybe you didn't press the button properly. You will press that button and this time the car got locked. Okay, you will go happily, you will shop and by the time you come back, your car is gone. Why? Because that signal that was intercepted has been stored by the hacker. The hacker lovely, nicely opens the door, walks into your car. The hacker knows how to hotwire your car, drives it away, sells all the spare parts. Yeah, the nearest garage. And by the time you're back, thank you very much, Tata YY, your car is gone. Okay, the car is in the in somebody's swimming pool, or it's it's in that it's in a lake, or the car is abandoned somewhere in the middle of the street and it contains nothing inside. It's absolutely empty. Okay, that's the car uh, un you can say uh, unlocker system or what we call as a roll jam attack, which we can use. Then we have this lovely little rubber ducky key logger. You have heard of rubber duckies, right? Yes, please. What is that? Uh, the mic, please. <laughs> Sorry, you have. And it's okay. Everyone can feel free to ask me any questions. Don't let me continue if you're uh, if you have got any issues with what I'm talking about. And feel free to ask me any number Six. of questions. Yes, please. It's actually a uh, it's actually a device where you can put in the malicious code of software. It also there is also. And as soon as you put in that PDF, while you're printing, within the 30 seconds that you're printing my file, my rubber passwords that are there in your browser. Okay, so remember whenever you are uh, typing any password into Chrome, into Firefox, into any browser, it's asking you one single thing. Save yes or no. And what do we do? If you press, press save, thank you very much, I got your password. Your computer press the hack now button and this tool will give you one year's worth of data. That's not a good idea, right? Yes, but don't worry, the only reason why I'm showing this in this slide is because this tool Sorry. has been brought down Bad long ago. Change. Okay, by us. The only place on the planet where it is available right now is the darknet and it's a cyber crime to even visit the darknet. Forget about downloading any tools, it's a cyber crime to be there. If you're caught, that's huge penalty, imprisonment. If you're above 18, you go in behind bars, otherwise your dad's in trouble. Okay, so try not to do that. Okay, so you can use these kind of tools. I'm just giving you samples of what's available online. Okay, if you're really, really serious about Getting that person's WhatsApp, you can easily get that one year's worth of data, even the chats that have been deleted, even those images and photos that have been deleted, because they have been deleted from your device, not from the servers. Smartphone hacking 
isn't it? Now, what's more important? You can see the screen. What is more important, the phone or the baby? You can see where the phone is, and you can see where the baby is. That's an international airport. Okay, that's a real photo, not AI created. Let me promise you. <laughs> okay, all right. Now, when we are on the topic of social media, let's talk about DPs. Our favorite DP. We are all guilty of putting DPs on our mobile phones. Boys, put whatever you like. I don't care. This is for the girls in the class. Okay, girls, if you put your DP on any uh, social media, especially WhatsApp, something like this may happen. Okay, and I'm not saying that it may happen. I can give you n number of examples of things that are happening. Okay. It takes, my dear friends, it takes something like three minutes to convert any image into a completely nude image. Okay. It's a fact. Okay. Just go to a tool called AI. It's an AI tool that is called, uh, you can say, uh, image generators. There are n number of tools that we have. They are called deep fake tools. Hmm? In deep fake tools, we have created an exact replica of Donald Trump cursing Putin of the same Obama doing the same thing and of Joe Biden doing the same thing. You can create a complete, you can say fake video of anybody on the planet, including me and including you. AI can be trained to recognize your voice in something like 30 minutes. All you have to do is feed my content that is being uh, go, it's, it's live on on youtube right now you just feed my content to ai now ai will speak in my voice it will use the same voice modulation as i am speaking right now and you can make my then ai version say body. things that i will never say and you will not be able to make out the difference even my mom will not be able to make out the difference between these two that's how ai has become so dangerous and just imagine what happens, all you need now, all you need to create a complete video about yourself doing whatever I want you to do. Okay. You can let your imagination soar. You can understand what I'm talking about. And it will take only one picture, only one single image, nothing else. Okay. So guys, girls, this is a humble request to you. Please, please, please do not upload your DPs online. I'm not saying that they can be misused. I'm saying that they are being misused. They are being misused. Okay. And that's a very, very dangerous thing. Okay. The only thing is right now, the world is so big that you're not able to see it. But I had a friend of mine who came to me and he said, now my Barbie's photo has been uploaded and it was there on a porn site that was in the US. This guy was in the US and he saw that. He saw that he was shocked. Okay, we had to go to the cyber crime cell and it took us weeks to get any, uh, you can say, uh, you know, uh, output from the, the cyber police. And by my dear friends, I am in cyber police. And still, I was not able to do it. Making a long story short, that picture is still available online. Okay, so it takes one mistake to ruin your entire life, my dear friends. Okay, it's not something that we should be taking lightly when you're talking about social media. Now, you know, when I talk to people and I tell them your Facebook account can be hacked, your Instagram account hack can be hacked. They will say, yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. So what's the big deal? Okay. You want to take my Facebook account? Take it. What will happen? What is there on my Facebook account? Okay. So let me share a story of this lady, this lovely lady. She was dropping her daughter the first day of school. My angelic daughter's first day in school, she had uploaded this lovely image. In the background, you can see the name of the school bus and you could see the gate. This, this photo doesn't contain the gate, but you could see the gate of the school and you know the timing. Okay. You know the timing that it was uploaded because it was uploaded in real time. And thanks to the geolocation tags that may or may not have been there, but this gives you ample details. Okay. Now what this lady did was. This lady had accepted in the morning a friend request of a nice, handsome looking guy in the morning, nothing wrong. 
okay accepting a request from a handsome looking guy who didn't accept she accepted a friend request the only problem was this handsome looking guy was basically a kidnapper i think you understood the rest of the story so the kidnapper to kidnap this daughter he wants certain details one thing is he has to sell this child to somebody and for selling the child you need a photograph mummy has nicely provided the photograph okay what else do you need to kidnap the child you need the timings when you are dropping the child you need the timings when you are picking up the child mummy status is helping the kidnapper with that also okay so 3 weeks later this child was taken in a gunny bag and this child was shipped to uh, you know an arabic country 6 months later this kidnapper was arrested not for one but multiple such offenses and he was asked how did you get this information his answer was simple mummy told me everything <laughs> status thanks guys for uploading the status you are helping the criminals do that that's what statuses are for okay we are uploading the status hey guys i am roaming around in my favorite country okay i am i am enjoying the picnic with my family and you know what there is one robber who is waiting to come into your home and the robber will come and rob your home because he knows you are not going to come back for 3 weeks nicely come enter your home steal your content and go away real life story i am not kidding when you are on social network all i need to do is read your profile everything that was read about me i did not give anything to abhijit sir big hacker he stole all my content from my website from linkedin from facebook from instagram i don't know what all places okay everything that he read out that madam has read out i have not shared any of this with sir how did he get this information my profile you get my picture there from my profile the the photograph that you saw on your brochure okay that was there from my website he nicely snipped it he cut it and he put it there okay the date of birth sir knows my date of birth oh i don't know whether he's going to give me a cake or uh, or a birthday gift that's beside the matter but you know if you know my birth date how you can misuse that right you can find out which school which college i have been attending it gives you details about my hobbies my whereabouts my likes my dislikes my favorite movies my favorite songs my favorite people my the you can say the likes the dislikes my locality my address this is what a hacker can get if you are accepting a friend request of an unknown person okay so there was this scenario where this research was done by this university of cambridge university of cambridge ek din kaam dhanda nahi tha un logo so they did a little bit of research and this research was on facebook likes and they said if we do a little bit of business analytics if we analyze 10 likes i will get to know a person better than their work colleagues just by analyzing your 10 likes your behavioral traits will make you know that person better than 10 of you you can say just 10 likes better than their work colleagues if you analyze 70 likes you know me better than my roommate or your friend if you analyze 150 likes you know me better than my family members brothers sisters and your family members not including mom mom knows you the best hmm? but if you analyze 300 likes they know you better than your mother they know you better than your spouse and they know they know you better than you know yourself just by analyzing 300 likes okay so next time when you like something think before you like let's talk about those lovely little chain messages that you get this message is coming from tirupati balaji this coming message is coming from sai baba this message is coming from krishna or from jesus or from shiva okay it doesn't matter which one is your favorite god okay you will get that message and guys you know what if you don't share this message to five people and 10 of your best friends you are going to have bloody seven and a half years of bad luck and you better do it in the next five minutes okay one person did not do it in the last five minutes and he failed in the exams <laughs> okay oh my god already paper is difficult ja raha hai i'm better share, share it with 20 people okay we do that don't we so what are these chain messages for these chain messages how many of you have been guilty of sharing them <laughs> okay 
Okay, they are raising their hands like this. <laughs> okay, yes, I can see that. And so there was this lovely message that I got from a friend of mine. It's a message coming from Teresa Fidalgo. She's a ghost. Okay. And she says that I'm sorry that I had to send this to you. Now that you have started reading, you can't stop reading it. So I'm Teresa Fidalgo and I've died 27 years ago. That already heart attack has And then you have to continue reading it. And she says that you have to send this message to 20 people and no sendbacks. One person sent it to 19 people instead of 20 people and the body was found hacked into five different pieces. And if you don't send it, I'm going to sleep by your side forever. I definitely don't want a ghost sleeping by me. So I better send it to 20 people. Okay. So this is how it's done. So sometimes it's Shady Ka Sai Baba who's sending me messages. Sometimes it is, you know, a ghost that is sending me messages. Let me tell you guys. If a ghost or a god wants to get in touch with you, they don't need WhatsApp. <laughs> okay, so keep that in mind. The next time you get a message like this, don't worry, this is not going to happen. <laughs> okay, so feel free, feel free to delete that message. It's absolutely okay for you to delete that message. Hmm? Okay, why do they give these kind of messages now? The serious part is these messages when you are downloading this, Okay, this thing contains something called as a secret payload. This image contains a payload. You will find these files, the files are a little heavy to download. Hmm? And this payload gets triggered as soon as you download it. It gets installed on your system and thank you very much, I got your all your data. But I am not satisfied with only your data. So now I want data from 20 more people like you and that is why I am employing ghosts to do that. Or I am employing gods to do that. Okay, so this is what it is used for. Not only did you get hacked, you are also responsible for hacking your friends. This is the power of chain messages. Please, the next time you get the chain messages, respond back to that fellow. Okay, I promise you, Teresa is not going to sleep by you. Okay, read that message. It's absolutely safe and Sai Baba will forgive you for not forwarding that message. Okay, let's talk about social engineering now. Okay, social engineering is that science and art of fooling people into revealing your information. Also, if I ask you for your password, you're not going to tell me. And it's very difficult to hack your passwords. Believe me, I'm a hacker for, for many, many years. It's not easy to hack people's passwords. But what I can do is I can fool you guys, hack your mind and steal your details. You'll not even come to know. I can give you freeware. I can give you a lot of things. One of the things that I can do is something like this. Okay, so social engineering, 95% of the data breach on the planet is done through social engineering. Nobody does the hacking work. That's a lot of hard work. The smart work is fool people. Some of the scams would be you won a lottery, a lottery that you did not even buy. Hmm? You got a dream job in Google, in Microsoft, in Apple, IBM, Infosys. I got an email from Bill Gates himself offering me a one million billion dollar job. I'm, I'm stupid. I'm still standing in Ruya College. <laughs> okay, see the whole point, right? So Bill Gates has nothing better to do, guys, except sending me an email. Okay, so see, and people get scammed like this. If you think this is funny, you should come with me to the cybercrime cell and talk to the people who are standing out there. There's a six hour queue there. Sir, mera do ajar chori ho gaya. Mera bees ajar chori ho gaya. Sir, seven lakhs gaya. Okay, these are the people who are crying. And what happened? Nothing, sir. I got a phone call. Lottery laga hai. Free car mila hai. They even showed me the model of the car. They asked me to choose the color and then all they did is they said, sir, just scan one QR code. I scanned the QR code. Now here I am. Hmm? Okay. This is how it is. Your friend is stuck in an, in an unknown country. Name of the country you've never heard. The friend is stuck in that country. He's been injured. He's hospitalized or she's hospitalized and asking you for immediate help. They have given you the banking details. They want the amount to be transferred or not. Okay. So please be a good person and uh, transfer that amount to that friend in that particular country. And sorry, the guy is not reachable by the way. The only way you can contact them is you can give them the money and they'll get in touch with you. Okay. Then we have a distant relative in an unknown country has passed away. You've never heard of that relative. You've never heard of that country, but that relative has passed away and left a huge fortune for you. Hmm? Now, all you have to do to claim that fortune is you have to give some peanuts, maybe two lakh, three lakh rupees here and there for some, uh, you can say, uh, legal fees. And the billions of dollars that this person has left will be yours. Hmm? 
this hacker will invite you in a lovely five star hotel you don't know but you are going to pay the bill later on in that five star hotel they will be giving you those lovely looking documents and fool you in such a way and you will say no definitely this guy can't be uh, you know fooling me this is a genuine case and yes i am definitely going to give the details the moment you give the details suddenly the phone number of this person changes the person is untraceable tata bye bye thank you very much you will see him after 3 weeks hacking somebody else that's how social engineering is done in social engineering those hackers will be sending you this lovely looking uh, you can say website so this website is of which bank it's not of icici bank it looks like icici bank it's a fake it's saying that your account will be frozen in the next 48 hours or in the next 4 hours depending on how urgent they want to make you feel and they will say you better fill up your corporate id your user id your password your transaction password debit card atm details your full name mobile number email address email password and all your pin details sir aadhar card nahi mangai okay so now check your balance after 5 minutes okay everything has been taken remember your bank will never ever ask for your banking details your bank servers already have this details uploaded on the servers in an encrypted format if any banker or anybody on the planet asks you for the username and password if i call you in my voice from my phone number please don't give me the details because my phone number can be spoofed my voice can be spoofed even if i give you a video call even that can be spoofed we have reached that situation in ai it is impossible to differentiate between reality and fake it's that dangerous guys never 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 share details with anybody so which is this bank just look carefully it is lc lcl bank it is not icici that tiny little dot is not there you cannot make out so this is called domain squatting then you have double zero and triple o in google okay this is how you can be trapped into clicking on it thinking that this is the genuine website because you can clone a website exactly like the real one okay just what the difference may bank and city bank what's the difference between the first one and the second one the a the a is a click a it's not a normal a this is created with you know ascii codes and this a is a fake website the second thing that you will notice is instead of https this fake bank will have http http is insecure https the s stands for security it contains that ssl certification that makes it very very secure okay if you get free vouchers please do not download them okay amazon is not giving you anything for free jeff bezos did not become a millionaire by shelling out free things okay please keep that in mind no free lunch no free lunch no free lunch keep that in writing okay let's talk about fake emails so this comes from your university saying guys you need to change your username and password this looks exactly like your university bank account the moment you click on that link it will take you a web to a website that looks exactly like your university's website put in your details and you are hacked just like that you will take your credentials username and passwords and you are hacked my students have created a lot of fake instagram accounts and facebook accounts and they have stolen a lot of details using these kind of techniques just to prove that it can be done they have never misused it none of my students have been uh, bad hackers and i hope you guys will also do the same in the future all right so modi ji or modi sarkar giving away free laptops this had actually happened and uh, what this link did was this link collected huge amounts of data based from real people thinking that the modi sarkar is going to give me a complimentary laptop because you can see the children enjoying with the free laptops and you could have free singapore air tickets this is a scam that had come last year and there was another one that is tata had completing i think 100 years and giving you a free stay in taj mahal hotel i wouldn't say no to that nobody would say no to that 
But what happens is, again, the same principle, no free lunch. Okay, what is happening here, if you'll see careful, the domain's name is not singaporeair.com. The domain's name is tickets free. That's, uh, the, the domain's name is com dash tickets free dot win. And this is the subdomain. The so subdomain comes with a dot. It's been very carefully drafted and many, many people fell victim to that. The other thing that people do not notice is it's HTTP. HTTP. There's not an HTTPS. Okay, millions and millions and millions of people got scammed by this attack that had happened last year. Okay, if I want to steal your password, one easy way is for me to use something called shoulder surfing. While you're typing in your password, all I have to do is peep. And something like this, whether you're sitting in the cafe, whether you're sitting in your office, or whether you're in the ATM. Very, very simple. The only thing that you should be doing is you should do what this lady is doing. Make sure that when you're typing it, Keep your hand over it so that the person, the peeping Tom, doesn't have a look at what's happening there. You know, if you ever go to the Santa Cruz airport, the international airport at 2 a.m. in the morning, you will see a very strange sight. You will see people will be bidding for that garbage can, Kachreka Dabba. They are bidding for it, 100 rupees. 500 rupees, 1000 rupees, 1500 rupees, and sometimes as high as 3000 rupees for that waste basket. What are they getting in that inside that waste basket? They are getting boarding passes. What does your boarding pass contain? The one that you casually threw away. What does it contain? It contains a QR code, it contains a barcode, and that contains your passport details, that contains your other details, that contains your, uh, you know, your, your physical address. And that contains your phone number and your email address. Completely accurate details of what people, banking companies or database companies will give premium money for this. And it's okay to say, you know, sell it for 3000 bucks. That is what is going on. So the next time you go to that ATM, next time you go to that, uh, you know, airport, if you really want to throw your, uh, you can say your uh, boarding pass, please tear it into small pieces and throw some pieces in one dustbin and some in another. Or better still, keep it in your pocket and throw it somewhere else. Or burn it. It's very, very dangerous. We just don't understand. If you're casually throwing away that ATM slip, how dangerous that can be. Okay, talking about your e-wallets now, coming to the, uh, to the section of your e-wallets. Now, how to protect my e-wallet? One way is, opt for reputable and trusted e-wallets. There are some cheap options available. They are giving you some kind of schemes, some kind of incentives to come to them. Don't get carried away with that. Okay, please go for the trusted ones rather than, or the popular ones rather than the ones that you have not even heard of. And now we think that we are being clever. We think that we are taking something that is better and all the others are idiots. Sometimes the opposite may be true. So be very careful. Okay, go with the tried and tested path. That is usually a safe thing to do in the cybersecurity. If so many people are doing it, there's less chance of you getting hacked. Okay, second thing is research the apps, security features, read the reviews. Are people writing good things or bad things about it? If there are zero reviews, that means they are fake. Very simple. If there are zero reviews or if there are reviews only on their website and it is not there on any trusted platform, they are fake. Run from there. Okay. Create complex passwords. What is the definition of a complex password? It should contain an uppercase character, one at least lowercase character, at least one number, and at least one special character. And it should be a minimum length, should be anything between eight characters to 14 characters. Okay, that's should be that's how complex your password should be. You should avoid guessable information. So what is my password? Try my birthday. What is your neighbor's Wi-Fi password? I'll tell you. One of the phone numbers. Hmm? Try five, six phone numbers. One of them will work. My guarantee. 80% hmm? of the Indians do that. They put their uh, phone numbers as their passwords in their Wi-Fi's. Okay, try your, your neighbor's phone number today and you will see that that is the password. 
or you can try the you can say their car vehicle number you can try if, if they have just got a new kid in the house probably it's that if they have got a pet in the house it is that name try that guessable password guessable information never reuse passwords for multiple accounts if you your one account gets hacked all your accounts get hacked that way turn on two factor authentication or multi factor authentication what is that it gives you sms it gives you an email it asks you to upload that code and that gives you better security so now if a hacker wants to hack me having my password is not enough the hacker will also need access to my mobile phone and if you are creating three factor authentication or multi factor authentication they will even need your fingerprints okay little difficult for them to get that okay now use a one time code to your phone for verifications that's the otp that we are talking about Updo, update your mobile device now this is something that usually takes up a lot of space so better delete some of those old videos that you are no longer watching and make space for that update okay there is a reason why those updates are given whatever weaknesses whatever vulnerabilities are there in your android system or in your ios system okay the ios or the android companies give you patches regularly every few weeks every few months make sure you update those patches regularly there is a very slim chance that you will get hacked if you do that okay because those are tested and they are secure install reputable anti virus and anti malware don't download that free anti malware and don't download it from that pirated website so pirated if you downloaded something again from a pirated website why did they upload it there in the first place okay because now nobody will hack you the anti virus itself will hack you be aware of phishing attempts we already talked about phishing phishing is creating a fake website and using that fake website to steal your confidential data avoid using wifi public access when you are using your e wallet please do not use public wifi okay please use public wifi only for gaming nothing else no serious business no confidential data should ever be entered into your public wifi report any unusual activity if you are seeing something that should not be there in your e wallet statement please immediately inform your e wallet provider and tell them to look into it keep your e wallet app updated enable screen locking and biometric if you do not enable you are very very liable to get hacked and finally finally if there is an encryption option available in your e wallet please enable that okay please 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 feel free to take these snaps i think it's being recorded also so you will get the recording so uh, in case you want please feel free to take snaps of any sites okay let's talk about cyber bullying guys do you know anyone who has been a victim of cyber bullying anyone the sir has a few contacts you have a few contacts what exactly is cyber bullying and what does it do let's talk about that and then let's see how we can prevent that so cyber bullying is something that's bad and it is responsible for making the victim Uh, have even suicidal tendencies uh, it stresses out the victim it uh, gives them some kind of uh, emotional stress social isolation and lot of things how do these bullies work they are such a mile miles away how can they bully me from there one of the ways they can bully me is impersonation they'll create fake profiles about the particular person and using someone someone else's identity to sp to spread some false information second way is harassment harassment is sending offensive messages galis and all that stuff uh, or emails to someone with the intention of hurting their feelings or bothering them or distressing them when you are looking at exclusion okay you will be excluded from that group everybody is in that community everybody is in group but you are not part of that group that's also cyber bullying okay isolating you from everyone else we have doxing doxing is revealing your personal information without your permission your sensitive your private information something that you do not want the world to know that is being shared by these cyber bullies cyber stalking you know what stalking is so somebody is stalking you and engaging in unwanted online attention we have flaming flaming is making nasty remarks about you using foul language using insulting languages and harassing you every time you go uh you know on the social media you come back disturbed outing okay outing is again 
sharing your private moments, your embarrassing information without their consent. Nobody wants their embarrassing moments to be made public. That's called outing. Hurtful content about you uh, on the on the net. That's offensive, humiliating content, photos, videos, or rumors to harm a person's. You can say uh, disturb that person's peace of mind. So how do we avoid cyberbullying? Very important. How do we actually avoid that? Protect your personal information. Do not upload information without. Uh, you can say thinking about it. So just think what are you uploading? Are you giving them your full name, your phone number, your address, your school, your workplace? You have to be very careful of what you are uploading. Someone out there is misusing it. Secure your social media settings. Please go to that privacy option immediately and make sure that your data is only shown to the people whom you trust. If there is that unknown person in that group, Okay, that unknown person should not be able to see anything about you, especially your DP. Okay, if you really want to know how DPs can be misused, okay, one day when I'm online with talking with the Haryana police, I'll be showing you some very, very disturbing images. Okay, after that, I'll promise you, you will delete your WhatsApp. Forget about deleting your DP, you'll delete WhatsApp. Okay, okay, now think before you post, think. What will be the implication of what I am putting? May I dress me kaisi lagti hu? Okay, please put it on a personal chat with your best friend. It's okay to do that. It's not okay to put it on the status. It's not okay to put it on your DP. Please take my advice. Humble request to all the girls in this class: Do not upload your DP. You can live without it. Hmm? Okay, but you, if your Photograph is uploaded on that fake website, my dear friends. I don't want to even talk about it. Use very strong passwords. We already talked about using a two-way or, or three-way authentication factors. Report and block the cyber bullies. Okay, just report them and block them. There are certain agencies, certain organizations. The cyber police will help you. The the college will help you in finding that particular person and blocking that person is the best thing to do. Okay, avoid responding to trolls. If somebody is trolling you, the best thing is ignore them. Okay, if you engage in an argument over them, nothing positive has ever happened by arguing with an idiot. So if you are wrestling with a pig, you will become dirty and the pig will enjoy it. Okay, so do not wrestle with the pigs. Ignore them, block them, tata bye bye. Don't engage in arguments or conversations with them. Easiest way out. Be selective with the friend requests. If you do not know that person properly, please do not accept their friendly friend requests. We do not know who they are. We don't even know whether this profile photo actually belongs to them or not. Monitor your online presence. Just go to Google today and search for yourself online. What details are available about you? Are these the details that you want there? Or are these the details that should be removed? If that is the case, please get them removed immediately. Educate yourself and others about whatever is going on. Please share this video with as many people as you like today. And make sure that they are also aware of what has happened and the things that you have learned in today's class. Seek help and support. It's absolutely okay to ask someone to give you support, to give you help. Because cyberbullying is a very, very, you know, an emotional thing and it may hurt you. You need some kind of emotional support and yeah, you definitely need a lot of cyber security support and we are there to give you that support in case this does happen to you. God forbid, if it does happen, feel free to contact us. Next thing that we want to discuss about, last two slides, oh, sorry, I think this is the, the second last slide. Now let's talk about masking your other. Okay. What is wrong by sharing my Aadhaar card information? Lot of problems. You will agree? If I just give you my Aadhaar card number, that is sufficient for you to buy a flat, not in my name, but I'll be paying the bills or a lot of other things. You will be taking a loan in my name and so much else. So that's basically how do you download and your must Aadhaar card. You just go to my government.in you will be logging in, you will be tapping in your other number, you will be take, putting in your OTP 
and take the mass other card option and download that now this mass other is valid almost everywhere on the planet you can use this mass other and it is safe and secure not only can you do that you can also upload your confidential documents like other your pan card and any other confidential documents on digi locker and this is the link to upload your things on digi locker it is secure there it is far more secure then uploading it on whatsapp and sending to your friends ye mera aadhar card hai ja mera ticket book kar le that's dangerous okay the last thing that we wish to talk about is how to protect ourselves from social engineering step number 1 limit your personal information that is shared online you don't have to tell people that i have been i ate pav bhaji today afternoon hmm? the second thing is regularly review the, your search results for your name okay go there and find out what information is available to the public about you third thing use a trusted channel in case you are getting a phone call you want a lottery and you feel this is genuine or you get that message from your bank okay i got a message from my bank and i was stunned because this person had done a lot of homework they not only knew my bank's name they knew my branch name and they even knew my account number so for a for a few minutes now somebody like me with 20 years of experience in this thing also got fooled and then i realized that this is what i have been teaching the people and now i am about to be trapped so i told this guy one thing okay it looks like you are genuinely from my bank okay what i'll do is i'll disconnect my phone i know the phone number of somebody in the bank i'm calling that number you pick the phone from that the person was not there okay i was saved okay that's because of the cyber security awareness programs that i have been running that i realize that i am about to be trapped this person had done a lot of homework and give me a lot of information that shows how much information is available on the dark net about me also okay so that's basically uh, always be suspicious of anybody who is asking you for urgent messages something this is very very urgent you need to take action on it right now they are not giving you time to think and they are definitely going to take you for a ride never provide never 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 provide anybody your otps your ssns your personal on your confidential information unless you are sure that this is the person that you are talking to don't click on links on emails that you do not trust don't open unexpected attachments and the last and final thing the most important thing in cyber security no one, no one. trust no one okay if you do that you will not be hacked so with that guys we are concluding today's programs if there are questions please feel free to ask me thank you so much thank you very much so voting anyone any questions thank you okay in that guess i will uh, conclude yes please How say for the free VPNs? Free, sorry. VPN. Free VPNs. VPNs. Okay, good question. VPN. What does a VPN do? It protects you or it protects your online identity, making you anonymous. If you want to go to a website which the government does not want to you to go, you will be using VPN, right? Isn't that what it is? What do you think the government will allow you to use that free VPN? what do you think why did the government put this policy let me tell you the recent regulation that they have taken our modi ji is wonderful initiative is the vpns whatsapp social media twitter instagram all these are mandatorily supposed to give the information to the government on demand so all the logs that the vpn keeps will be shared about you whatever illegal movies that you have downloaded whatever games that you have downloaded using that vpn will be shared with the government and one fine day you will get the bill okay i hope that answers your question so there's no no free lunch again the same answer yeah any other questions so sir that are the iphone they always say promote that they are talking about uh, privacy and how secure they are and that's why we pay almost a lakh rupees to buy these iphones are these iphones really that secure wow sir very important question for all those iphone users in the class are iphones really secure more secure than androids is a mac 
better than a Windows uh, operating system? It's a good question. What do you think, guys? What do you think? A hacker can hack only an Android device and cannot hack an iOS device. True or false? The only reason why, if you if you go online and if you search for the vulnerabilities of iOS, the vulnerabilities of iOS are less than the vulnerabilities of Androids. Androids have got more than twice the vulnerabilities. But it is not because the iOS is more secure. It is simply because the iOS is consumed by less number of users. How many people can afford an iPhone? <laughs> Simple question. Okay, 20% of the people are using an iPhone. 80% of the people are using Androids. I am a hacker and I want your data. Guess where I'll go? Android. <laughs> Android. Where will I go? Windows, not Mac. This is the only reason why we are not touching Windows. So yeah, guys, you are safe because you are paying more. So you are relatively safe, but not because the platform is safe. It is safe because we are less interested in you and more interested in the masses. <laughs> okay, sir, I hope that answers your question. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, so if there are no further, yes, please. Uh -huh. You announced this last question. Okay, AI, yes. Uh, AI, our uh, voice is getting recorded and our voice can be used. Correct, And correct. our figure, image, image generation can be used. Yeah. Sir, why not government are banning that AI website? It should be given only access to uh, legal people of higher authorities. Why okay. it is free for all? It should be stopped. No? Why is the government promoting the digital world in this, uh, you know, in this era where it is very, very insecure in the world of AI, in the world of all these things? Why is the government, not only Indian government, why is the world government crazy about digitizing everything? Because it is very easy to monitor you on that platform. The government is not looking at the, some of the implications. These are some of the side effects. But government, all the governments of the world want one thing, that is e-governance. Okay, they want to be able to control you and control your misdeeds. They don't want to send the police to your home. Okay, all they want is just by pressing a button, they should be able to block you from doing a bad deed. So that is the only reason why so many AI tools are being promoted. That is the only reason why everything is being digitized and there is no way that you will be able to convince the government not to do that. You know that and I know that we are not ready for a digital world. You know how much problems we are facing. Okay, there was this, there was this person who had met uh, the, uh, you know, an, an income tax officer and he told me in no uncertain terms that India is still shitting on those railway tracks and here we are using a digital India. We are shouting digital India. We are not ready for it. Honestly, we are not ready for it. But nobody gives a damn. It's going to happen any which way, whether you like it or not. Okay, internet is entering into every single house. Mark Zuckerberg is coming all the way from there. Mark Zuckerberg has got 6.5 billion people online using Facebook. So the world's, world's population is 8.5 billion people. Uh, people. So he says, what are these 2 billion people doing? Now he wants them also on Facebook. <laughs> okay, so I hope that answers your question. One more question, sir. Yeah, sure. Sir, uh, basically, uh, scam is going on, message comes, yeah. electricity bill pay not paying, so you have to meter out of Correct, correct, yes. yes. So, as such, the bank details are in my family. Mein ho chuka hai, yeah, yeah. Uske so, again, uh, very good question. Now, how do you know that this does not come from that company? You see the name on top. This is not a name, it's a number. So that number is a fake. If it comes from, uh, you can say, Maharashtra Vitran, Mahavitran. Okay, in that case, what you do is you cross verify, you call that company. Okay, I got a message today while I was coming here, I got a message from Bharti Extra saying that you have not paid your premium when I know very clearly that I had paid my insurance premium and I saw the message, it was not from Bharti Extra, there was a spelling mistake. So I called up the company and they said, no, sir, your, your uh, insurance has been paid. So these are the fake things. They will just change the spellings here and uh, here and there. You saw lclcelbank.com kind of things. So this is how they will manipulate you into revealing your details. So never, never, never fall prey into that. If you paid the bills, it's perfectly okay to delete that message and not forward it to anybody and never click on that link. Yeah, I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Is GPA safe? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, I use GPA and uh, I do not trust uh, GPA. <laughs> okay, so, uh, but but then, you know, as of today's version, we don't have an option. By the way, GPA is not under RBI's jurisdiction. 
So if your GPA gets hanged, you have to contact Google. And I don't know how to contact Google. I don't think there is any human being working in Google anymore. We have all AIs there. So if that ever happens, I would wish you all the luck. Uh, so just be careful how you use that. GPA as of today is quite a secure platform. I have tested it. Uh, I don't trust Paytm, but I do trust uh, GPA comparatively. The only thing here is if you are using uh, GPA, uh, try to keep minimum balance in that account. That's my only request. The amount that you, if you feel it ever gets compromised, this is the amount that you can afford to lose. All right, that's what you should be doing. So a couple of lakhs in your GPA is a very, very bad idea. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that's that's about it, guys. Any other questions? Uh, otherwise, I'll hand over uh, to Madam Dev. Thank you so much, everyone. It's been wonderful. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of SP Mandari's Ram Narayan Ruya Autonomous College, sir, I thank you for a very meaningful and an interesting session. As sir said, this digital world comes with a lot of advantages and disadvantages. And it is a need of an hour today to be very careful while using all these digital platforms. So thank you for sharing all the different ways in which hacking is done. And after attending today's session, I can confidently say that we will be able to protect ourselves from hackers. While everyone just debates on uh, social media being a boon or bane, no one really talks about cyberbullying. But dear students, now you very well know that what you have to do and what you have to not do. So your profound knowledge and experiences that you have shared today are definitely going to benefit all our students, including us. I'm sure just like me, everyone here is looking forward to have many more such sessions with you. Special thanks to the Ruya College ICT Committee, Computer Science Department, all student volunteers for organizing this awareness session. And last but not the least, special thank you to all my dear students for coming here in huge numbers and being so interactive and making this session a great success. Thank you very much.